What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Save Point Podcast, Episode 2. I am Alex, and I still have trouble uh, saying that opening. But here we are, another week. Uh, hopefully, everybody's having an awesome, awesome Saturday. I want to go over uh, you know, a couple of housekeeping uh, things in the beginning of this, and then we'll go into you know how this kind of plays out. So once again, this is our new show. You know, We talk about several different things, or we do several different things in this. Uh, I, I first want to start off by clarifying the uh, it being on other places. So I'll be very transparent and open. And basically what happens is I put this on a hosting site and then the hosting site through that I put it on other places. So iTunes I think is still processing. It will and it should be up on iTunes eventually, probably within the next week or so. And I think all the episodes that already happen will also. So hopefully by like next week or the week after, you know, all the episodes that have already happened will be on iTunes and then any future episode will also. Spotify, now I got gypped with Spotify. So Spotify as of right now I'll say is not going to happen, at least for right now. Um, you have to pay like a like a subscription kind of charge in order to get it there. There's, you have to jump through uh, hoops that I'm not going to do, at least not right now. Uh, and actually, the last part of all of that, so it will be on iTunes. Right now, the hosting platform is also its own you know, uh, uh, like podcast service. It's called Podbean. So if you guys download that, you can download it on, on uh, any kind of mobile device or whatever. It's a podcast service, and uh, you can listen there for free, I do believe. So if you want to listen to it, like right now, Podbean is the place. It's under pod- I, I think all of these are under podcast now. And it will be on iTunes and uh, Spotify. You know, I hope to do it down the line, but at least not right now. Okay, so let's deal with all that stuff. Uh, extra, I guess, final piece of housekeeping. Remember to be featured on the show. Well, as of right now, it's kind of just whoever leaves comments. So if you guys want to talk to me about any kind of question you may have, you know, gaming, movie related, whatever, you know, leave it in the comments. Um, also, topics. If you want me to do kind of like longer segments, not just answering a question, but topics on something, leave in the comments. Over. Over time, as I've said, being a supporter for us uh, on Patreon or YouTube memberships, if you're a $2 or $5 tier, $5, you have like a guarantee for me to read your stuff. If you have a $2 tier, you're pretty much guaranteed. Um, And so that's the guaranteed way of me reading your stuff, of you being kind of featured on the show, okay, is to support us on Patreon, links in the description, and then YouTube memberships, which obviously the join button is the YouTube membership thing, okay? Pretty sure that's it for the house uh, house cleaning. I, I I keep wanting to say housewarming, but that's absolutely not the phrase. So let's go into the main topic, which is my Cana Bridge of Spirits kind of full-on review. And then I have a couple different um, topics, kind of questions that were posed to me last week that I'm going to answer this time, okay? So you look, uh, Cana is incredible. It's incredible. I didn't plan, you know, the review. I don't have a script. I wish I had kind of like, I do have a bulletin board up there. Maybe I should like write things on it because I don't write anything on it. But no, it's an amazing game. Uh, it's very rough around the edges. We've talked about that before, right? In the early impressions video is pretty much how I still feel. So in the early impressions video I did a few days ago, I played the first, at the time I recorded, I record, I played three hours. And then after I recorded, like a couple hours after I recorded it, I then played an additional three and a half. So I was at like six, six and a half. And then the next day I beat it in around two and a half or so hours. So again, it took me like eight, eight and a half hours to beat the game. I love it. Um, it's very much, I don't know, I want to say it's like a prototypical uh, video game, and that sounds very weird. Like, the kind of game that this is, it just makes sense. Like, you you go to three different areas, you have groups of almost quests to do, right? You, like, you have a central mission, and in order to do that central mission in an area, you have three other things to do in that area. And then once you do those three, you unlock the main thing, and then once you go to the main thing, then you fight your boss. You know, there's different enemies, there's platforming, there's puzzle solving, all in between, and at the end, you fight a boss, and you move on. And there's cutscenes, and, you know, stuff. Like, it's, I don't know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? It, it, like, it feels like... I guess maybe that's a negative thing, but also kind of a positive. It feels like a game you've probably played before, okay? Now, the thing with it, though, visuals obviously stand out, and they never stop standing out. To to be quite honest with you, I was still in the last cutscene of the game, okay? I was actually very sad to see it end. But, like, in every single cutscene, I was just unbelievably impressed with how good it looked. I mean, really, you know, and I've said it before, like, that kind of art style will always get me. 
and, and it's more of like a Japanese thing, I would honestly. I mean, this is more like a Pixar thing. But, you know, like, there's a reason Kingdom Hearts will always stand out to me in that way. I mean, if you've seen the cutscenes to any Kingdom Hearts game really throughout time, it's it's next level, at least in that way. It's not like when Uncharted 4 came out or God of War 2018. Like, those games, or even, like, The Last of Us Part 2, like, in terms of, like, realism, it those sen- uh, those uh, set new benchmarks. They do. This is, like, on the uh, not necessarily opposite spectrum, but just on a completely di- a different spectrum with Final Fantasy, you know, kind of like where they're, like, I don't know, puffy-ish faces. They don't necessarily have the most emotions in the world, but it just looks so incredibly beautiful. I mean, I loved it. So, visually great. Again, even in the game, it felt really, really good, or it looked really, really good. Uh, There's, you know, like, textures far beyond the reaches. You know, they they don't look as great, but a lot of the stuff I chalk up to them being first-time developers, this being their first game. The combat, like I said in that early impressions video, it never stops being good. In fact, it only gets better. You unlock more things. You get new kind of abilities. You have new ways of kind of using those abilities. The enemies keep switching up. The bosses are incredibly well designed they're hard i mean some of those bosses towards the end specifically are incredibly too maybe too hard not really no i I don't want to go that far honestly they're a challenge they're a challenge and you know i'm i've said i'm i'm one of the people that kind of speak out against like the easy mode i know that's not uh the the greatest thing to say and i've explained more in detail in other videos so you guys can watch that but you know i i I like a challenge. I do. I do. I don't, I don't want it. I didn't want it to be a cakewalk, I should say. And uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. I died many, many times. And uh, and I got frustrated. But you know what? I made my way through. Like, it It pushes you to get better. I mean, that's just what these things do. You can either quit, which is, I mean, it's fine. And then, trust me, I've quit many from software games. You can quit or you can keep pushing through and you will You know, you know, will improve. So that's what I did. And uh, it, it, it's pretty cool. So the story is pretty solid. Uh, I will say the story gets better. Uh, you know, in, in the early impressions video, I said what I kind of like and kind of find interesting, but also not fully love about uh, Kana herself is that they put you, they give her to you in the middle of her journey. You don't really, it's harder, I would say, to like a character, to get a character to be likable to you and to understand and all that stuff, understand the character, when you're kind of in the middle of something, when you just kind of drop, you know what I mean? It's difficult. It's a lot. And I guess you could argue like every character in anything is like that because they've always had a past. I don't know, but a lot of times you see like origin stories for games. For this, like she she knows who she is, she knows what she's supposed to be doing, she has powers, like none of that stuff is new. So I, I think it's just kind of different in that way, which I respect. And I will say, as the game goes on, specifically the the final third of the game. You do find out more about her backstory. You do find out about her a little bit more, and uh, things start to make more sense. So, I, and I really like it. Uh, I, as I said, I guess in that early impressions video, I her voice is is pretty good. I'll say it gets better. Uh, throughout, it's not the greatest voice acting I've ever seen. She's very quiet. She's very soft spoken, kind of like this. It's it's actually it's very different. I I kind of like it. It comes across a little almost indifferent in the beginning, but as you, I think I warmed up to her. That's the best way I can say it. I warmed up to her character and I really liked her. I didn't. I don't think she's the greatest character of all time, but by the end, I definitely liked her a lot more than in the beginning, and I liked the story a lot more. The story I think gets very good as it goes on. So it's a slow burn kind of thing. I would argue uh the length very solid i'm i'm happy with eight eight and a half hours i think it is a game that could overstay its welcome you know if this was a 50 and i know people have played more but say average time eight hours just just say if this was like a 12 hour like you add another zone to the game i don't know uh in, unless obviously you kept giving us new powers which did stop if you gave us more stuff, maybe it would work, but under the way it is now, I feel like it it did not overstay its welcome. It was kind of a perfect length. I didn't feel bored at any point. There are issues. Like I said, the audio is a little bit weird. Um, it takes a while for her character and the story. I encountered one of the weirdest, I'll say this, the full story out loud, I encountered one of the weirdest bugs I've ever seen in my life in this game, and that was so... It was like the, um, what was it? It was like the second major boss, okay? So there's like three zones, and the third zone is that final, the final chapter of the game. The second zone, you at the very end, you go, uh, you have to get all the, like, the relics, and then you face a boss. So I died several times at that boss, okay? I died probably like eight or nine times, all right? And what happens is when you die, it resets you to the relic kind of painting on the ground, you press triangle to interact with it, and then the game will load you immediately back into the boss fight, okay? And it just goes back, and so you die and just keeps doing that, right? 
I felt like the game almost got tired of doing it, like got tired of me dying, because at one point I died. It sent me back to the circle. I press triangle to reload the boss fight, and it tells me that I need to find the three relics to uh, unlock the, the boss. And I was like, but I have all three. The ground is lit up on all three zones. So I'm like, the game honestly is broken. It, it forgot that I got the third relic. So I was like, okay, well, what do I do? And I was like, well, maybe if I load into the save. So I was playing that uh, on Wednesday during the day. So I was like, okay, if I load in, because I, did, I made no progress, okay? So Wednesday when I started playing it, I was at that boss fight. And I kept doing it. So Tuesday night, I was also on that boss fight, my last save. So I said, okay, I'm going to load in my Tuesday night save. And it maybe because it's different, like the game will realize it, right? So I load in that Tuesday night save, and it puts me back like 35 minutes before I got that third relic. And it overrode my, I don't know if even that's the right word, it, it took over the save I originally had. So it lost the save that I was at the boss fight, the final boss fight. It, the save was gone. It was replaced by 35 minutes before getting that third relic. So I had to get the third relic again, go back to the boss and, and activate it and pray that it didn't do that again. So that is one of the weirdest it, you know, it took my save away. It put a new save in its place without me even doing anything. It literally broke where I was fighting the boss, you know, go back, fight the boss, go back. And then it reset me. And then it told me, like, you can't do it. And, like, the thing is, I had to load that last. Thank God there was a last save. Because if there wasn't, I literally would be screwed. Because the game literally thought I didn't have that third relic. But I did, and the ground was lit up. So even if I went back to the zone where the third relic was, it wouldn't have been there in that save. I had to, you know, reload an old... So actually, I'm thinking about it now. I can't believe that. Thank Jesus that I had a save from the night before that was right before that third... Or maybe it was an auto save, but thank God I guess the game did it or I did it because if it didn't do that, I don't even know... what I didn't have any other saves, so like what would have actually happened? So maybe the, the patch that happened on Thursday would have fixed that, but then I would have had to wait, you know, another day. So, like, that stuff is scary, honestly, to me, because that almost breaks. Like, if I, if you're not high on a game, right, if you don't think a game is good, and something like that happens to you, okay, I don't know this for sure, but I'll, 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 I'll say I can speak for you in this case. I feel like I'd quit it. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm, if I'm iffy about a game, and I'm like, I don't know if I like this or not, like, it's okay, and all of a sudden that bug happens to me, I'm putting my controller down. I'm done with, I'm going to uninstall a game. I'm finished. That's I guess that's kind of how I am for games that I'm more iffy on. So thank God also that I was happy enough with the game at the time to push through because I could have just quit right there. So that was bad, definitely bad, definitely shouldn't happen, and I really don't see that happening in many games at all nowadays. Uh, obviously, like Cyberpunk has some issues and stuff, but uh, you know most games don't have that kind of problem. So that's a problem, but really besides that, I liked it. I'm trying to think of like any other combat, visuals, story, characters. It's good. It's this is a really good game. I think it's worth the forty dollar price. Um, you know, I think I don't want to go into spoilers, but I do think a second game could happen. Uh, it's possible, and uh, and I really I want to see more. And on the second channel yesterday, podcast now plus yesterday, I actually talked about the the co founder of the studio did talk about uh, kind of DLC, kind of like combat challenges. He mentioned that. So I I, there, I think there will be more stuff for this game, just, uh, you know, probably not like story DLC. And then we'll have to see, obviously, for the future for a second game or just anything next that comes from Ember Lab, I'm obviously going to support and play. This game, this game surprised, I mean, well, I don't even know. Like, did it surprise me? I, I always wanted this game to be like a game of the year contender. I was always into this game literally since last, I believe, June, right, was when they showed it so I've been into this game for over a full year and I've I've tried to always stay I mean there's been like concerns that have kind of brought me back and forth but overall I've always really wanted to do good and it did I would actually say the biggest thing that surprised me was the combat I didn't think it would be like I thought it would be okay I thought it'd be serviceable in fact I said that phrase in videos leading into this game I thought that that's where it would be and no it's it's phenomenal it's very it's simple but it's effective and there's enough intricacies with it. I love it. I love the combat a lot. I, I Honestly, it opens up the possibility for combat challenges because I think the game is almost made for that. So yeah, I'd say get the game. If you haven't gotten it and you're kind of on the fence, uh, you maybe wait for a sale. You know, $40 maybe. 40 bucks for eight hours maybe isn't 
enough for you. And, and I get that. You know, we've talked about that before as well. Wait for it to go to 30 or maybe even 20. I mean, if it's 20 bucks, you got it. You, and, and you like those kinds of games or you trust my opinion or whatever, I do think you should get the game. I really, really do. Especially, I mean, for 20 bucks, why not? 40 bucks, maybe you're more on the fence, but I enjoy it. Now, I, should, I guess I, I should have said this in the beginning, but I have said this in past videos. They did give me the code. So I paid nothing. So, I, I mean, okay, that's that's the case for me. But I, honestly, and maybe this makes me look bad because I've said a lot of good things about it. And you're going to say, oh, you're just like IGN or just like Kotaku. No, I mean, hopefully you guys know me. I, I, I wanted... And like I said in that uh, impressions video, I'm actually, I feel like I was harder on the game than I should have been. Because a lot of the issues with it could easily, you could just say, small team, first game they've ever made. And that could be your excuse for literally any weakness that this game has. And I would honestly accept it because why not? You know what I mean? I think that's a valid, that's a valid thing for really anything. Same like a movie studio or a musician. It's like, oh, I didn't like that one song. Well, it's their first album they ever made. You know, So it's like, you know, what are you going to do? I would say I was actually more critical of the game just because I had such high expectations. And I think it hit pretty much all of them. I mean, this was the game that I thought it was going to be, and I'm very, very impressed by it. So take that for what you will. Okay, let's go into the, uh, I believe there was two of them. Now, you know, you guys showed me support last week, and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So I want to go with Alex first. Longtime viewer, really appre always appreciate this guy. He's, he's awesome. He said, excellent uh, video slash podcast. Thank you. When it comes to reviews, I tend to put more uh, credence into YouTubers I trust over game journalists, and there was more of a split with this game in those circles, so that was on Deathloop. Uh, a question for next week. Are you looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy, and do you think it could be sneaky good? So let's talk about this just for a little. We'll go into the next one, and we'll we'll call it quits. I'm, I am. I'm looking forward to it. Now, actually, what's funny is in between this comment and me recording were those previews. Uh, devel or, uh, developers, uh, you know, gaming journalists, the best people in the world. They got to play the game, I believe, on Monday. Or they were playing it for a while, but they published their thoughts, I believe, this past Monday, uh, you know, six days ago or five days ago. And they liked it. Uh, I, I don't think it was... So here's the deal with it. I saw some positive. I saw some really positive. I would say overwhelmingly I saw kind of positive. Does that make sense? Like there were some people saying like, oh, this is incredible. I would say the average talk from everybody was like maybe it's better than they expected it to be and it's good, but it's not. I mean, there were some people saying it's like Mass Effect level. I mean, that stuff. Well, look, I guess actually Alex's first point to this is or his first point in the comment was maybe the most important. I don't trust these people at all anymore. I never really did. We've talked about that before, but, you know, when it comes to reviews or even more recently, like I just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm almost at the point where I don't want, maybe it's just because of me, right? I don't want to listen to anything they have to say because I just think they're so unqualified. They don't know what the average person even thinks anymore. It's just, it's actually, it's incredibly sad. And I know maybe that comes off really the wrong way where it's like, so you're not going to listen to like any of them. I don't know. I mean, like, and even like review scores, like I talked about with Deathloop, like they have their purpose. You know what I mean? When I see a game has an 88, say Deathloop, an 88, right? That obviously does do something to you. But I don't know, like after recently, like again, like and it's just my opinion, right? I don't think Deathloop is an 88. So when I see an 88 now, I'm like, well, is it actually an 88? The, the last was part two. Like, is it a 93? Not really, not at all. You know, so and that's to me. That's to me. So from my point of view, when I see these things, it's like, I, I, if the game got a 2 out of 10, I don't even know if I would trust that it's a horrible, horrible game. Maybe it says something politically that these idiots don't agree with, and that's why they, I mean, it's very likely that happened. You know, obvious, and again, like, there's buts and ifs to all this stuff. Like, if it gets a 2 out of 10, there's probably some severe issues. But, and I know that's not really the question he asked, but I guess my point is I've always been excited for it. I've always been hopeful that it could be something special, okay, that it could surprise people, right? That's actually the main thing. Like, can it surprise people and just be better than what we think it could be, which is probably a very low bar right now. I actually think the game could do really well just because we expect almost nothing from I don't know about you guys. For me, I don't expect almost anything at all from this game. So if it gives me anything automatically it's better. Do you know what I mean? And maybe that comes across wrong, but you know what? <laughs> They've done it to themselves. And I know it's not them who did, you know, Avengers, but I guess the way things have kind of played out, they've kind of done it to themselves. So I hope it's good. I want it to be good. The previews do give me hope that it'll probably be better than I think. At the same time, again, these people that we're reading know literally nothing, most of them. Uh, obviously, like the YouTubers, I think, are a lot more, way more, you know, a thousand times more credible. So when they say it's solid, and I think some of them did, um, you know, then I will trust 
them a little bit more. So that is the answer. Now, and uh, I guess for, like, clarification or for, like, future things, we will be covering, or I will. I always say we when it's just me. Like, I will be covering Guardians quite a bit. Um, or actually, I think, and I'm looking at my calendar, I believe next week will be the first video for Guardians. I didn't write it down. Oh, that sucks. Uh, you know, Guardians will be the uh, a video next week, though, and I'll probably cover it weekly. So you'll, you should get, like, four or five videos from me before the game comes out. And then when the game does come out, you know, well, I'll talk about it then as well. I'm going to lean into it uh, quite a bit. So second one, uh, and I, oh man, I have to get glasses really. D Grizz. There we go. Every, every letter is now become visible. So thank you, D Grizz. Topic of the week. Hey, Alex, let's get straight to it. Let's compare Marvel versus DC. Marvel is straight up Titan in the gaming universe while DC is struggling, hesitating, releasing games, i.e. Da uh, Damian Wayne and Superman. DC has a stacked roster and has no excuse for why they can't produce games. In my opinion, I think to rival Marvel, DC should be an Xbox exclusive and should start to release bangers such as Superman or Flash or hey even Wonder Woman if you want to please the LGBT journalist tyrants I'm starting to ramble because I think of many ideas of what they should do maybe you should have me on as a guest I have ideas for things like that I'll talk about in another video anyways I want to know your thoughts of this topic since the hype is at an all time high mainly due to Marvel games and movies DC needs to step up yeah uh, so this has been a thing that's been asked of me. I think you put it actually a lot better than most people when they when they ask me it. I um so like well here's the deal. And I've said this before. I like Marvel's strategy with what they're doing. I don't necessarily think they've done like an incredible incredible job in terms of the games, right? Spider-Man is really still the only one. A lot of the other ones are mysteries, but again, I like... So, it, it's kind of mixed. You know what I mean? I, I do love the strategy. Because again, like, Marvel's Avengers is not for everybody. Midnight Suns is not for everybody. Um, Wolverine may not even be... You know, like, like, obviously, I'm very excited for Wolverine and stuff, but, you know, you have all these games, and they're not made for every single person. So, a lot of this stuff is still up for chance. The best ones are literally limited to one studio, arguably, right? So, like, if, if Insomniac destroys it in a good way crushes it with spider-man 2 and wolverine but say midnight suns fails you have two games that try to do something try to like go into different areas and, and avengers and midnight suns that just didn't oh, i guess i keep for, I, mean, I literally just talked about guardians why do i keep forgetting it guardians of the galaxy say that fails too okay let's or let's say even it's like a middling game so really you have insomniac is just a good developer and that's it. That's really, I think, what you come away from the discussion with. You know what I mean? So, I, I mean, I get what you're saying, and I'm not, I'm not like, picking on you or picking on really anything. But because I, I actually am very impressed with Midnight Suns. I know a lot of people are very much not. I, I'm excited for it. I think it's a, it's an XCOM Marvel game, and I, I'm ready to play it. I'm ready to at least try it. Guardians, like I said, is, I hope is good. So I guess my answer to your question is I don't think Marvel is, like, the king as much as people may think they are in terms of, like, this gaming space. I think there's just getting started maybe in another like two or three years we could see them as like yeah they are they are crushing it dc i will agree though they they really well like gotham knights we don't know could be good could be bad suicide squad could be good i mean suicide squad could just be their marvel's avengers they need ultimately they need more and i think the issue is the way dc is structured in games and the way Marvel is structured in games are separate, and DC almost limits itself. So maybe that's why, you know, to your point, like if they align themselves with Microsoft or something, maybe they could. Now I don't, I don't think they should be bought up. I think, you know, everybody who is mad about Spider-Man should be mad probably ten times more if 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 DC was uh, excluded. People will say, well, you got Spider-Man, Sony, so we get the entire DC lineup, and they'll be like, and they'll think in their heads for some reason that that means that they're even, even though when you think about it, just a little but you'll immediately realize it's not even Wolverine give them Wolverine but we have Wonder Woman Flash uh, you know Teen Titans uh, Justice League Suicide Squad Gotham like we have all that it's like well those aren't exactly like the numbers don't actually equal out so you know I, I'm not a fan of them being bought up I don't like the monopolies and stuff but I, I again I get your point and I actually do kind of agree with you I do think because of the structure Marvel can literally hand these out. Just like Star Wars, actually, what you're going to see from Star Wars, right? The Wild West of Star Wars is coming back very soon. You'll have Quantic Dream. You'll have Ubisoft, right, You'll with, like, the Division game. You'll have EA doing their stuff. I mean, you're going to have a lot of different Star Wars stuff all happening at the same time from different people different these are going to be very different games from each other are some going to be good yes are some going to be bad yes sounds a lot like marvel doesn't it and that's 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 actually why i like marvel strategies i think they're copying 
uh, uh, Star Wars' strategy back in like the early 2000s, and I think Star Wars is going back to that. So that's kind of like that's why I like it. And DC doesn't really have that. You know, what I mean, DC has WB Games, which is now Discovery, and they have those studios. So if WB Montreal can only crank out a game every 15 years, that's what. And Rocksteady can do one every eight years, and Monolith just drops off the face of the earth. And maybe they want them to make a superhero game, but they're doing the, the Middle Earth games. Like that's what they have to work with. You know what I mean? So that's uh. Maybe they want to. I don't even know how you do that, like legally. Like, can you pull? I, I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. I guess, but my answer to how they could improve is probably honestly just give these uh, properties to more studios. That would. Uh, that's really the only way you can, because as of right now, there's only like two or three studios out there working. You know what I mean? I guess WB Montreal is two. These are two teams. Rocksteady, right? Am I missing any from DC? NetherRealm, if they do Injustice, right? So you really only have three, maybe four literal studios in the world that can make like a triple A DC stuff. And that's it. Like they're not giving it to anybody else. They're Those are the ones they own and they're stuck with them. Whereas Marvel, they have literally no loyalty. You know, I guess you could. I mean, you could say the Spider-Man stuff and 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 Sony with exclusives, but again, like already Wolverine and Spider-Man, yeah, that's exclusive. And Miles, but then you have Midnight Suns, you have Avengers, and I guarantee you there will be more from third parties. Like even the uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, right? Uh, Ultimate Alliance Three was a Nintendo game that was back like two or three years ago on the Switch. So it's an exclusive. So they just go randomly, and uh, and again, you're gonna get good ones and you're gonna get bad one so i don't know i it's fun i don't think marvel is like some super like like they're like they're some actually incredible i don't know, like they're doing everything perfectly i don't think they are so it's not like a king battling like a peasant as, as some people may put it but yes marvel is doing a lot of things that i really like and dc i don't know i feel like needs to just switch up their strategy if that's even possible for them at the same time and I don't know if people are actually going to – If I assume the people that watch this and the people that watch it this far, they know me. They know I'm not calling out really anything in this, right? Again, I am excited for Gotham Knights, and I want it to be good. And that would help them quite a bit if Gotham Knights is good and then if Suicide Squad Killer Justice League comes out and that's a good game, then DC is right back. Let's not forget – that the Arkham games are still probably the best superhero game trilogy, at least, that we've ever gotten. And I guess that's uh, that's by default because it's never really happened before. But, I mean, it really also was the, like, that's the blueprint for how you do it right. You know what I mean? That's Spider-Man. If, if, if Arkham never came out, Spider-Man probably would never have come out. You know what I mean? So it's very, it's always going to be important. So you have to remember, and I guess, but that's only one studio. You know, I guess uh, WB Montreal for Origins. But Rocksteady, obviously, I think that just shows the talent there, at least that they had. I don't know if they still have it. Hopefully they do for uh, Kill the Justice League. So, all right, I'm pretty sure that's it. Again, leave in the comments anything you guys want to discuss for next week. Questions, topic. It could be like quick, again, like fi you know, rapid fire questions. It could be longer topics like we just did. I'll have a topic most likely remember if you're a two dollar or five dollar tier person number one you get you know pretty much guaranteed for me to read your stuff number two when there's weeks where i don't have topics like maybe next week will honestly could be the first one where like i don't have a, an easy like a, a kana and death loop those were easy topics for me to pick because they were new games if i don't have a topic i will do a poll on topics and if you're a two dollar or five dollar tier person you can vote on those you don't get to vote if you if you just watch for free okay so that's uh that's another perk you get so we'll probably do that next week again if you want to support us patreon links in the description uh join button is obviously next to the subscribe button obviously the rest of the stuff is self-explanatory subscribe all that good stuff if you made it this far i truly truly appreciate you uh share the video out you know i normally never ask for that uh and so you know i'll, I'll ask the very maybe the five to ten people that made it this far to just share it on Twitter or, you know, post it somewhere just randomly. It would uh, mean a lot and it just helps the video kind of spread out a little bit more, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Really do appreciate it and hope to see you all on the next one.